All right, hello everybody, and welcome back uh, to this edition of the MSAHA Basketball Weekly Show. I am Trellis Williams, and joining us again is our co-host Ollie Hammonds, beat writer uh, for the TSU Network, representing the Laurel Nighthawks. Uh, Ollie uh, had a little bit of an uneventful uh, week, a little bit, but also eventful in other ways. Uh, man, thanks for uh, being here again. Hey man, uh, having fun doing all these shows, but yeah, not not much, not many actual games to talk about. Uh, we got a lot to look forward to this next week, but you know, a lot of cancellations because of COVID. So, yeah, so uh, that's that's what we're going to start off talking about. There are uh, a good few cancellations uh, this past uh, week and weekend. The Muddy River Counselors PCA game that was supposed to be down and Slide L got canceled. The uh, Laurel was also supposed to go down to PCA and uh, go down to Slide L and play PCA. That got postponed, got moved to the 29th. Um, Jackson and Laurel, which was supposed to be in Laurel, that one got postponed as well, got moved to the 27th. Um, Scott County Flames and Muddy River Counselors, which was supposed to happen on Monday, that got canceled. That's not going to get rescheduled. And another, Tupelo and Meridian were supposed to play on Friday. That one got canceled. So just a lot of cancellations, and, and it, all this stuff was really due to COVID. Um, so just just kind of a tough go. But the games that we do have uh, to talk about, because um, we, we, were, I mean, we were talking last week, and we were talking about how big of a week we had and all these games that were going to happen, and then, like, most of them got canceled. Um. But we do have some things that happened this past week. So in 16U action, the Jackson Victors defeated the Meridian Flyers 37-29 to in Hickory. They were able to get that win, get their third win in conference. But the biggest news from that game, which was the toughest for the Meridian Flyers, was that Elliott Tulip got hurt in the game, and he is out for the season. Hurt his ankle. Uh, I think it was a fractured growth plate. And so he is out for the season, and and that's not that's big news for the 16U, but really mainly it's big news for the 18U. It really um, really is tough for Meridian's chances in the 18U uh, field. Um, you know, coming in, Meridian's played very well. They uh, even they beat the Laurel Nighthawks uh, 69 to 49 on that Tuesday, two days before this night, but. Uh, the Jackson Victors were just able to beat him seventy-one to thirty-six uh, without uh, Elliot Tulip. So, uh, just just talk about uh, talk about that and um, and what you think. Uh, how much of an impact do you think that's going to make on the on the season here? That's a big big uh, shot to take there if you're if you're Meridian. That's that's that hurts. You know that that really hurts because. I mean, you had you had to kind of expect it, right? A guy that's got to make all the plays for both 16U and 18U for Meridian, he's at some point going to get hurt. He's just involved in so much of the game for Meridian that he's going to get hurt. But, I mean, it, at the worst time, right? Two weeks from the tournament, we got the Monroe tournament coming up. You know, it, it's, it's really going to – it really hurts Meridian there. But, uh, you know – you hate to hurt. You hate to hear it on a personal level, right? Uh, you never want to hear about somebody hurting themselves end out the season. Yeah. So it's kind of it's you know it, it really sucks, you know. Yeah. But especially especially for Meridian, but you know their 16U team I think can can kind of get by without Elliot, but their ATU team I, I don't know, man. Uh, it's really all the things that we talked about them being kind of a sleeper team all kind of was riding on Elliot Tulip showing up. And now he can't. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that, that that is tough. One thing about the uh, Meridian Flyers is that they were already dealing with an injury. Like they they had lost one of their uh, one of their starters to a fractured foot. He's out for the season. But it was actually amazing they were able to to move on with that, and they still were able to you know get some wins and th- and things like that. And then going into a night where they played Jackson at home, and they were looking to, to really to nail down the number two seed. And what they end up with was a 35-point loss and then losing uh, your your leading scorer. And um, now the thing about the Meridian Flyers is that they still have a dominant big guy. 
uh, it's just that now, now I'm sure what Coach Raspberry's working with him at practice on is just getting those young guys because now he's playing a bunch of 14, 13 year olds, you know, playing with playing um, in that starting lineup. I'm sure what he's trying to do now is, is get them to get them to feed it in uh, to Isaiah Davis to yeah. get buckets in there. Uh, wh- how, how do you think that? How do you think that might turn out? And, and what do you think uh, Coach Raspberry might be able to, you know? whip up with that i think the big key there is uh, of course isaiah davis he's a senior right is that correct right. he's a senior so old cliche play like it's your last one he it really is yeah so he's got he's got he's got to get aggressive you know he's got to be able to he's gotta be able to take take over the game fill in the shoes to elliot tulip had of course coach raspberry you know working on get the ball to the big man you know yeah. <laughs> so it a lot there's a lot that Meridian has to work on before the tournament if if they plan to be competitive. And, you know, Isaiah Davis, he's probably taking it on himself a lot because this is his last chance to to, to win the MSAHA tournament, right, in 18U. So we'll see how it works out, but they got to put a lot of work in. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, with, with Elliot Tulip as well, he is a sophomore and he's a very impressive player for – uh, the Flyers, but, you know, Lord willing, will have two uh, more good years of being able to watch him play. But just, uh, I mean, just on a personal level, as a as a homeschool basketball fan, I'm just, I'm going to miss watching that, that squad play because that, that squad, uh, I mean, it, they, you know. They always surprise you every year. I mean, I remember playing Elliott Tulip in 14U, and I remember playing 14U with Nate Sherman, and it was always you know, game plan for Nate Sherman. In my last year in 14U, we always said, you know, there's this kid, Elliot Tulip, that you got to kind of watch out for. Then last year, I mean, he just improved by leaps and bounds. from And from year to year, he has developed so quickly. And you're right. It, it, they're a fun team to watch, but mostly him. You know, I probably – I would pit him against any in the conference to be the best player in the conference. He's definitely top five, maybe even top three player in the conference. And so it, it really does. It really sucks to not be able to watch him play the game of basketball, you know? Yeah, for sure. And so now uh, we'll, we'll uh, move on and uh, talk about the uh, Laurel Nighthawks defeating the Hattiesburg four runners 36 to 29. And so that was a 16 U uh, game and uh, Laurel was able to get that win. And, um, and so you know you you were involved in that game, Nighthawks getting the win. Nighthawks really sitting there at that four spot in the uh, conference, uh, right behind Scott County, and then of course the counselors at number two, PCA at number one. Uh, wh- what did you think about that game and how that one turned out? So last year I played on the H and U Nighthawks team, right? Uh, we won the state championship, of course, and that team had this vibe of in the in the beginning of the season. You know, we weren't all that great. We won some games, but we lost some. And it just had this vibe of kind of a sputtering team. You know, we were kind of still trying to grab our footing because the senior class that had left the year before, all five starters left. You know, so all these guys had to, had to take the starter roles for the first year. We lost, like, Michael Jenkins and, you know, all these people that were great basketball players. So they had to kind of fill shoes uh, last year in the, in the varsity realm. And so they just kind of trudged along until about about now, something just clicked in their minds and they just melded together. And of course, we all know what happened. They come to the tournament, they just went out and they play only one team that's a lower seed than them. I'm getting the same vibe with that night with with the Nighthawks JV team being on that team. We just kind of we're getting getting our wins and losses at the beginning of the season. Took our took our lumps, and now it just seems like we're gelling at the right moment. And that game against Hattiesburg, we always talk about Hattiesburg's a sleeper team. When you beat Hattiesburg, you don't go, well, you know, we beat a, a lower C team. No, you can take some pride in that. They're a scrappy yeah. bunch, so uh, that really feels good to get a victory. But uh, especially knowing that you know we can hang with the top two seeds, and then to get a tough victory like that. That's a that the, that makes us feel good going in the in the tournament time. Yeah, for sure. And just like you're saying about Hattiesburg, you know, that's a t- it's a tough draw because now now that the counselors and Paladins uh, 16 U game uh, got canceled, now it is it is uh, I think it is for certain now 
that PCA will take the number one seed in the 16U standings. Uh, Muddy River will most likely, yeah, Muddy River will take the number two seed as well. And um, so, but now that means that, that the counselors will most likely be playing the Hattiesburg Forerunners who are the seven. And th- there's, there's a difference there. That's not an easy, that's like, that's a tough first round go, especially w- what you would think of being a two seed. You play a seven seed, so that that's that's a that's a tough one, and um, you know that's a good win there uh, for Laurel, and of course in eighteen u girls, sixteen u girls, the Lady Hawks are just kind of, I mean they just kind of been uh, stomping everybody. I mean they moved to six and zero in eighteen u girls, they're twelve and zero overall. Um, sixteen u girls, they're ten and zero in conference and thirteen and one overall. So I mean, you're talking about like one loss between sixteen U and eighteen U. This that's really just amazing. And they're just really, you know, getting wins by big margins and all that kind of stuff. Uh I we've talked about it every week, but how are how are the Laurel Lady Hawks looking to you? We uh you know basketball we we've talked about this too with they with the girls with the Laurel Lady Hawks fundamentals can win you so much in basketball and that's what they have down they have the fundamentals down put the ball in the hoop right that's the objective of the game the lady hawks can hit they can hit their layups sometimes that's a divider in the game you know there's all kinds of stuff that can divide teams and fundamentals is the main one and that's what coach sean of the lady hawks has instilled in his girls and that is the fundamentals of the game of basketball. And that's what's propelling them to be so successful. And of course, we've talked about this too. This is the same groups that won 14 new tournaments and last year, 16 new tournaments, you know, they're, they're, they're a really good bunch and they've just kind of grown up together and they've grown their game together. So that's interesting. It's interesting to watch because it's really, you know, the showing that if you have fundamentals, you can be successful in this game. So it's fun to watch. Yeah. And so, uh, and so we'll, we'll move into talking about the upcoming week, which, uh, we have, we have some things happening upcoming, uh, week and, uh, but I will remind you, um, to go ahead and, uh, pick up the MSHA league pass. So the league pass has a bunch of games from around the conference. Uh, a lot of, uh, the conference games are on the, uh, are on the league pass. So, uh, if you go pick that up, that'd be good. Individual games are there. Uh, for purchase as well, um, a little uh, a little fun fact here: um, the Muddy River Counselors, when the when the uh, game against the Scott County Flames got canceled, uh, the Flames had some uh, COVID issues. Um, it was the Counselors Senior Night, and so they played a brown and white game at home. And so that game's actually up on the League Pass. If you want to check that out, and just a little sneak pre- preview, yours truly played in the game. And so if you want to, you know, see. How you know how that went? Come on, Trellis. You know, hey, listen. Come if, on, Trellis. If you just want to see how that went, you can go. Come to the on, man, and check it out. Oh my gosh! That, that's, I mean, all I, a, that's all. That's all. plug. <laughs> that's all oh, I'm gonna say. Yeah. On that note. All right. So this upcoming week, <laughs> this upcoming week on the 25th. The Scott County Flames will be taking on the Hattiesburg Forerunners in 16U, and so that should be uh, that should be interesting. So, uh, Ali, what do you think about that? What do you think about that one coming up? That's the three seed Flames against the Hattiesburg Forerunners, who are the seven, as we've talked about uh, earlier. What are you thinking going into that game? Um, you know, Scott County and Hattiesburg in 16U are kind of similar teams. You know, they got. Good, a good point guard. Both teams have very good point guards that can shoot the three. They really don't rely much on the mid range jumper. You know, they, they'd rather drive in, try to get the foul or step back and hit the three. So that they're very similar in that way. They really like to run the floor a lot. Um, that's, that's kind of mostly where they like to get a lot of their offensive points is running the floor. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think this might be a, this might be a place for Hattiesburg to sneak in there and get that win, right? To kind of have, you know, you talk about uh, Muddy River. I know you've talked about this before, not having that marquee win yet. And then when they beat Jackson, they had that. This could be Hattiesburg's way of getting that marquee win, right? Against a number three seed Scott County team who's really surprised a lot of the league 
Yeah. This could be Hattiesburg's chance to really come into the tournament knowing that they are a, a good enough team, have a fantastic chance. Yeah, and and then and then also from Scott County's point of view, it they they're really looking for for a win to go into the um you know to go into the tournament yeah, on yeah, right. on a good note and and they also they do want to they do want to uh, solidify that uh that three spot and I think it, when I look at the standings right now I think they've solidified the three spot they are five and two in the conference and um so they have solidified the three spot but there's also momentum momentum is probably more important than seeding right now. Because another thing, too, that we have not even mentioned is that playing Hattiesburg in the tournament is not a good draw either because Hattiesburg is going to have home court advantage because yes. the tournament is actually in Hattiesburg. So uh, any home court advantage that's floating around would be going Hattiesburg's way. So definitely not yeah. a team. That... Hattiesburg has stepped up the atmosphere around the game. So it really kind of is. They've really made it an advantage. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? For sure, yeah. 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 So, also uh, in the upcoming week, we've got the Gulf Coast District Tournament uh, for the NCHBC. That will be in Monroe, Louisiana. And so, out of the MSHA, seven of the organizations will be involved. The Motor River Counselors, PCA Paladins, Laurel Nighthawks, Meridian Flyers, Jackson Victors, Hattiesburg Forerunners, and Tupelo Titans will all be involved in that uh, tournament. They'll be in different divisions. Like the counselors are only doing 18 years. I think PCA is doing, uh, you know, multiple teams. Laurel's doing multiple teams. I know Meridian's doing 18 U girls. Uh, Jackson's doing uh, 18 U and uh, boys. And you know, you're having different teams doing the different thing. But um, definitely a lot of involvement uh, there. What, what, what do you think? What do you think the, uh, these games could be like? Uh, go ahead and talk about 18 U uh, boys right now. What, for the teams that are involved in that, what do you think uh, Monroe could be for these teams when it comes to statement wins and things like that? I think this year it's been really, really cool to see the MSHA. You know, it's it's grown from year to year, but to just see how much it has grown. I mean, that many teams going to an out-of-state tournament is a big deal. You know, the, the MSHA yeah. has grown a lot, and so it's a – it's a great time to kind of celebrate, celebrate what all the teams have contributed to grow this conference into being. So, and, you know, also kind of a chance to see what it'll be like before the tournament, you know, so it's kind of a precursor to the tournament. Doesn't count the seating, doesn't count to regular season, you know, record. It just counts bagging rights at this point. And to kind of see uh, how, how it's going to end out in the tournament. Um, so that's going to be interesting, but I mostly think that what these teams need to take away is kind of a celebration of the conference, just to show you know we've grown this much. Yeah, and so like, uh, take for instance the uh, Muddy River Counselors and the PCA Paladins are actually in the same pool, and so they will actually be playing each other at two forty-five on Friday afternoon, and that that'll be interesting because they've only played each other one time as the second game got canceled. So this is almost yeah. like their opportunity to play the second game. Obviously, it will, won't be a conference game, but it will be an opportunity uh, for the teams to, you know, to play each other uh, again there. Counselors will also play the Baton Rouge, uh, Baton Rouge homeschool team. So that should be interesting. PCA will play them as well as their all in the same pool. The Laurel Nighthawks will be playing the Little Rock Flames and the Southwest Louisiana Knights, and so that'll be that'll be a, a you know that'll be a tough first day because uh, um, we know that the Little Rock Flames are are, are really good. And uh, of what I've heard, I think the Southwest Louisiana Knights are um, are are pretty good as well. So so how do you think that'll be for the Laurel Nighthawks uh, facing those kind of challenges? A uh, tough day, you know he. You summed it up right. It's a tough day. Um, they'll be able to kind of see where you're at before the tournament against other competition. Um, you know, just kind of just see where you're where you're at. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they how they handle that. So, uh, it, you know, getting to see other organizations is kind of tough because you don't know how to scout. You just show up and you play the game. It's kind of the purest version of basketball, right? You just show up. And, throw what you got at them and they'll throw what they got at you and just see what happens. So it's going to be interesting. 
Yeah, and then uh, t the last 18 you, uh, team that's going to be involved in it is the Jackson Victors. They will be taking on uh, the Shreveport Force and the Saline County Warriors. Um, now, Saline County, we were able to see them uh, in Arkansas. Uh, the uh, the counselors, the Flyers, and the Nighthawks all played them. Um, and Saline County's a, a good team. Had close games with all three of those teams. Um and, uh, of course, Saline County was able to win over Laurel, Meridian, and Muddy River. Very close games, though. Uh, Shreveport Force, I, you know, of what I've heard, that they're, they're uh, a solid uh, ball club as well. So, definitely some challenges there for the victors. Um, and, now, and now with Jackson, they're actually riding a little higher because they, they were able to get that 35-point win over Meridian. Um, but another part of that, it was not just that Elliott Tulip was gone, but, the, but Jackson played – extremely well I mean, they had 21 points from john white they had uh 20 uh 23 points i believe from jude williams their shooter which that's a that's big nash spicer played really well colin crosby played really well they really looked in form and if they're able to bring dan greet back they're going to be a, they're going to be a solid contender and so you know this little period of the season where they've kind of been taking losses and like not yeah. looking good and that comes to an end it, that might be coming to an end, and, and I think Monroe could be a very good opportunity for them to bust back in uh, to to saying that we're here and we're ready to go. What do you think about that? Uh, I think for Jackson, it, you're right. It's a great opportunity to make a statement. You know, make a statement. Tell the conference, hey, we're here to play. You know, I, I they're not a very high seed, but uh, they're a good team. They're, they're a team that you can't really take uh, – Go, well, if we're going to win this game. They're a lower seed than us. No, you have got to show up and play. And, you know, Muddy River, Meridian, excuse me, saw that. Of course, Elliot Tula being announced a big, I mean, when you beat a team by 35 points, yeah, that's not an accident, you know? No, no, no. Uh, so they're, they're just a, they're a stacked team when you look at them. It's kind of, it's kind of been a tad bit of a disappointing season for them. But then also you look at, you know, they're missing, some people and they the guys just haven't been really playing as well they could. And I think you're right. I think they're they're starting to show, you know, this is who we are. And I think Monroe is a great opportunity for them to show just how good they are. Yeah. I I definitely uh agree with you there. But uh I think that that'll just about wrap up what we have to uh talk about um for the MSHA basketball. And so I do want to say this so uh, we do have the Monroe tournament, and uh, we are planning on streaming. Um, of course, uh, you know, you never know what happens with the internet. We went up to Arkansas; the streaming wasn't working. Of course, the thing is, is that uh, I will say this: that it will be Counselors TV, so the Counselors games will be on there. And I think we'll we'll try to figure out a way to maybe uh, possibly get some of the other um, 18U games on there. Uh, possibly as well, but but the Muddy River Counselors PCA Paladins game should be being streamed on Friday afternoon at, at 2:45. So that that should be interesting, and we'll, uh, we'll and also please make sure to check out the website because tshitofnetwork.net. That's where all the scores and the standings are. So if you want to, if you wonder what's going on, you can go. You can look at the articles that are being posted on there. You can look at the scores. You can look at the standings. So really. If you look at that website, you can actually pretty much be able to tell what's going on, and so uh, and so we'll be having those scores be put up after those games at least, um, and so that's that's in Monroe, and of course the next weekend we'll have 14 U tournament, and, and next week we'll talk about that uh, a little bit. We don't usually talk about 14 U, but since we do have the 14 U tournament coming up, we'll talk about that a little bit on next week's show. But uh, but I think that'll wrap up today's uh, today's show. So uh, so Ollie, man, thank you for uh, doing this uh, with us again. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit shorter of a show, but we had a bunch of cancellations, you know. Um, yeah. So uh, yep. Yeah, so I appreciate I appreciate it, Ollie, and uh, looking forward to the next one. Hey, can't wait to see you next week. Yeah, for sure. So thank you for joining us and. Uh, this is the MSHA Basketball Weekly Podcast. I am Charles Williams, and we out.